This QuarkCon video segment explores another feature found under Leads and Estimating called Request for Pricing, or RFPs. A request for pricing package is used to request, track, and analyze pricing on items that will be needed for a lead. RFP packages are typically created for each scope of work that is either subcontracted out or where suppliers will need to provide materials. If the project is awarded, the winning bidder for each package can be issued a PO or subcontract in Corcon's procurement module. To add a new estimate RFP, from the main menu, I'm under Leads, and I've already created my first lead. To get to RFP packages, you'll need to open Estimates. In this case, I've already got an estimate started, and then click View Estimate. Before we create our first RFP, just a few notes on things that you can do to prepare for this. If you go down to the cost code, in this case concrete, cost codes can have the ability to include scope of work at the cost code level. If I click on inclusions, you can see I've already added the scope of work for a concrete subcontract. If you use the same scope of work over and over, you can create scope templates in global settings under templates and reports. Back to the items, and we're going to create a RFP package for these five items under division three. So we'll go to bid management, go to add import. It is important to note that there are several ways to import these. You can import estimate cost codes. You can import from other estimates, or you can add manually. We'll use the import from estimate cost codes. We're going to select that cost code. We'll import all of the scope since it's there. We'll set the issue date, the bid due date, the bid due time, and tag a contact within your company as a coordinator. And we'll click next. The next thing we're going to import the bidders. There's a couple places you can pull these from by classification, by bidders list, from the master list, or from other invitations to bid. I'm going to use the master list and we're going to ask two subcontractors to furnish and install all of the concrete scope of work. The first is stick of concrete, the other is pinnacle specialties and click next. Next it's asking me which estimate cost items I want to include. In this case I'm going to include all five and click save and finish. The next step is to make sure that the scope came in properly. So we'll click the edit button and scroll down. We'll check to make sure that the inclusions, exclusions, and clarifications were all pulled into the RFP. We also need to give a little more specific work scope. I'm using something very simple, but we encourage you to spend more time on scope than I did and click save and close. Next, we need to confirm that both of the bidders have the same items on their bid sheets. Then we go to send invite, click OK. Even though these two bidders are from two different companies, they have no way of knowing who else is bidding on this RFP. If we scroll down to the bottom, we'll see a RFP template, their name and company name will be filled in when it gets emailed to them. If I wanted to include some additional information, if I go to attachments, click choose file, I can pull additional PDFs or files into the RFP at the email level. Then I'm going to click send email. Next, you'll wait a few days to see if your suppliers and subcontractors will respond to the RFP package. There's basically two ways to do that one through the team link portal and one using the authentication method number one, which is replying to the RFP through an email form. Once they've replied, we come back to this RFP and the information will be filled in for you automatically. However, if you receive your response to the RFP in some other format, you can also manually enter those for them by just clicking on their name, scrolling down, and just filling in the blanks. Back to the RFP. The next step is to run the bid analysis. 
There's some summaries of how everything came in. When we get to the last section, you're going to see, in this case, three different columns. First is the estimated cost, which is the cost that before RFPs were sent out. Then each of the bidders will also show up as well and their totals. Notice these are unit costs. You have the option to select the lowest item, but if, in this case, that might not be practical since some of the items are higher and lower and spread across two different subcontractors. So I'm going to select the lowest bidder overall, and that's going to be Ray Sticka at Sticka Concrete. Now at the moment, what I estimated this cost to be was $62,250. That's what's in my estimate currently. But I want to accept this $59,700 bid from Stick of Concrete. So if I go to Actions, there's quite a few ways to import these numbers into your estimate. But in this case, some of my items are based on materials and labor, as if I would self-perform concrete. I want to set all of those cost resources to zero, meaning materials, labor, equipment, and other. And I want to move everything into the cell rates column. So I'm going to select this item, confirm, confirm again, and you'll notice now the bid received from Stick of Concrete has updated my estimate with the same amount. Back to the package. There is also a detail report that you can print out. Now that I've accepted the bid or RFP from one of the subcontractors, if I go back to items, scroll down to division three, I can see the total of division three now matches Stick of Concrete's bid. This video just explored one way of creating a new RFP, but as a reminder, you can also add RFPs manually you can also import RFPs from other estimates. If you'd like to know more about this information, we suggest you go to the help articles, to leads and projects, then to estimates. And under the estimate request for pricing packages, there's several articles that relate to this subject.